from the Saguaro National Park in Tucson, Arizona. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week, if we could change the world, this is what we do. We've also got a bike helmet band to make riders safer. Johan Brunil is taking on gravel, as if anyone cared. A dog, most like Daniel Lloyd, and some big news from us here at GCN. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that while the pro cycling season was gathering pace, the opposite was true at the annual Dutch Headwind Championships. Yes, by all accounts, it was the hardest year yet. Storm force winds, plus sea spray, and even added sand to make it really unpleasant. If that doesn't take your fancy, here's something you can do from the comfort of your sofa, because we also learned this week that Wordle, the daily word puzzle that has taken the world by storm has a cycling specific rival called Baikal. <laughs> yes, because this is the creation of Bidon, an Italian cycling blog. The principle is the same as Wordle, except that the five letter word will be the name of a professional cyclist instead. Turns out I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretty crap at both and have basically zero memory for the number of letters in a pro cyclist name. We'll put a link though in the description if you want to have a go yourself. I reckon you'll probably beat us. Yeah, I, th I think so. We did waste a bit of an hour. Yeah, I haven't to get got this right. week's yet. Yeah. Uh, right, anyway, we learned this week as well that whilst we initially thought that Daniel Lloyd's spiritual dog was a greyhound, it might actually be his Whippet Bedlington Cross. Check it out. Ridiculously skinny, so I mean, fast for short periods of time and also slightly grey and furry. Exactly. Daniel Lloyd in a nutshell. Uh, right, anyway, good to see Dan back to domestic duties there, or domestic duties, should I say, escorting his team sprinters safely to the finish line. Uh, right, now this week we have been chatting here at GCNHQ about what we would change in the world if we had the power. Now clearly, end all wars, sending Elon Musk into space on a one-way ticket and increasing the minimum height of doorways would be top of the list, our list, of course, but we're going to be realistic here. Yes, realism is the aim here for when we have the power to change anything in the world. What laws would we remove or implement, either for personal reasons, like door height, or for the good of the planet as a whole, like sending Elon Musk into space on a one-way ticket? <laughs> First of all, okay, right, I can think of a few. I've got, I've got a few up, up my sleeve. Yeah, I think we can agree bikes are universally pretty good and yeah. I enjoy riding them. I expect you all do too. Yes, I mean, if anyone here doesn't, then we'd like to hear from you in the comments section. But welcome along anyway, of course, if uh, you don't like bikes, we can try and, yeah, we'll take you for a spin, put it that way. So bikes are good, let's make them cheaper, but what can we do to make them cheaper? First up, remove sales tax, VAT, ETC would give. A good discount, I think, um, but let's go the whole hog and create government subsidies. Subsidised Pinarello, anyone? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, that does sound good, but that kind of thing exists already, yeah. doesn't it? Yes, like bike to work scheme here in the UK, tax free bikes. Uh, fair few far sided governments that are also uh, subsidising actual bikes. Norway offering 1200 euros off the price of an e cargo bike. France, a couple of hundred euros. Well, Actually, so that's actually, that's peanuts, because if you compare that to the money you can get off an electric car or a van, we should pretty much be getting paid to take e-cargo bikes away. Well, that would be quite cool, actually. All right, so uh, free cargo bikes. Uh, on the subject of free stuff, I reckon free food and coffee, roadside dispensaries, I, like I mean, so uh, you never have to bonk again, like a little robot or machine kind of hanging on the side of the road. Um, so you didn't even have to stop, you just grab what you need as you go, a little espresso, or maybe a gel, maybe a some so many crisps. I like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of worried I might get banned from them though. I'd be like <laughs> blacklisted. Serial <laughs> abuser of free <laughs> food. No, but you, no, like you, just that, that wouldn't be a problem. A man of a big appetite could be just as easily satisfied on the free roadside food as anyone else. That's fine. I just worry that I'd be that one person that gets it kind of ruined for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> but how about bike parking? Have you ever thought about how much space is given over to cars on roadside, parking up on our, on our streets? I mean, when you look, they are littered literally everywhere. And I think it's a big stumbling block of cycling that you're not able to leave your bike somewhere safe, locked up outside the pub or the supermarket or wherever. So why not remove parking spaces 
give them to, to bikes. I like that. I like that. There'll be a truckload of comments about how that's already the case in the Netherlands. But a lot of us, most of us, aren't that lucky, are we? Um, or maybe, Connor, we won't need bike parking at all because you could just take it with you wherever you go. Like, you take your bike around the supermarket with you, so you don't have to lock it up upstairs. Or take it to the cinema. I really like my bikes, but I'm not sure I want to go to the cinema with any of them. But sticking with the being allowed places bit, land access is a big one I'd have a go at. It's not such a big deal when road cycling because most roads are public anyway, but for off-road, that would be huge, wouldn't it? Riding on footpaths here in the UK, it would be the dream. Bikes aren't allowed on them currently, and I know in the States there's a load of issues around land access. Yeah, that is right, isn't it? The bikes are restricted all over the States in terms of uh, riding off-road. Unlike in Scotland, where you've got the right to roam. So perhaps we should all just move to Scotland instead. Rain's a bit up there. We'll go if we can get a rain jacket. Well, that is true. Having bought our cargo bikes in Norway first. Of course, yes. Uh, now, one thing I would usher in pretty swiftly, Connor, is removing the speed limit for e-bikes. Now, this is kind of Europe-wide, really. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily remove it completely, but I'd certainly raise it. 50 kilometers an hour? Well, no, I'm thinking more like 30 or 32 kilometers per hour, so 20 miles an hour, so you can get the same speed as cars, but not stupidly fast. That actually makes a lot of sense. Going at the same speed as traffic makes cycling much more comfortable, I think. Fast moving traffic from behind can be terrifying when going slowly, so let's slow the cars down, cycle faster. Yeah, I like that. What about this one then as well? If you overtake another cyclist, you have to give them a push for at least 10 seconds. No more passive aggressive overtaking. You don't have to say hello, just like a solid boost every time. Just kind of like spread the spread the, the fitness love. Like we'd all get strong, you know, biceps finally. Well, not everyone. Some people will just get lots of pushes. Um, I would like to see personally a levy on short car journeys. So I don't know how this could work, but making car journeys less appealing to make more people ride bikes. I think is the way forward. And then any money you collect from your short car journey levy, you could subsidise public transport with instead. I reckon this is going to be a Pandora's box in the comments section. Yes. Why can't we stick to something safer like making people wear socks when cycling and when being a pundit on the breakaway show? Well, that is true. Actually, that would be safer ground. Um, I'm going to stick to safer ground then for one last rule. Communal free bike washing facilities. So you don't have to turn up back at home covered in crap like Rafa and Micah here. That would be amazing. Not every region of every country is going to need this, so we could economise a bit. But right here, right now, that would be fantastic. And if the water was warm, you could also spray your shoes and tights, oh. tick the boxes, potentially just have a bit of a shower. If you've got nice water. hot water hose and free muck off. Mm. That would be a good rule, actually, wouldn't it? Uh, right, those are our initial thoughts. Um, slightly disturbing in some cases. But anyway, get involved in the comment section. What would you change if you could? I look forward to reading them. Now, we promise you some big news, and we're delighted to announce the Global Bike Festival will be taking place this summer. The ultimate festival for all bike riders, whether roadies, mountain bikers, gravelers. There's probably even a lake somewhere for the athletes to have a splash about in. Well, and you as well. You're like a mermaid, don't you? Like um, it'll be taking place in Saalbach in Austria, incredible alpine resort, surrounded by great trails and also lesser known but equally amazing roads. And GCN, GMBN and EMBN will be taking it over. You are all invited. There'll be a festival village with stacks of stuff to try and do from the latest tech to mechanics workshops, plus live events, DJs, all sorts. We'll all be there riding, hanging out, generally living the good life with as many of you as can make it. Check out globalbikefestival.com for how you can join us. I actually went to Salbach in Austria late last year and they have free bike wash facilities too. What? Yeah, made the most of them. You serious? Yeah, re really good. My word. The reason enough to go there if ever there was one. Uh, now, if you are wondering where Dan is today, he has gone to Belgium to film a new documentary for GCM Plus about his favourite race, the Tour of Flanders. And, and I believe we can actually go over to Dan live. Yeah. Ah, that probably shouldn't have been too much of a surprise, should it? 
Right, it's time for some GCN inspiration now, that part of the show where we pick out our three favourite uploads from the GCN app this week and give you a prize. Starting in third place this week, Connor. Winner of a GCN stainless steel water bottle, bike or bust. Now, this is an absolute brilliant photo. Ooh. First ride, first sunrise ride uh, bike or bust has ever done. Look at that, absolute. Classic one. Beautiful nice. shot, really and like that. What I like most, they said, watching your bucket list TCN show, I realised I'd never done a sunrise ride before, so I've done one now. Highly recommended. There you go. There's, so no, there's nothing like a sunrise ride. No, absolutely. Tick. That one done, move on to the next one. Uh, right then, um, second place. I mean, move on to the next one on your bucket list, by the way, not just move swiftly on to second place, which I did. Um, anyway, winning a GCN Core Red T-shirt and an Elite Water Bottle, 550 mil in red to match your t-shirt, uh, is this one from Kellerman R. First road ride of the year, 50Ks around a lake in Hungary. Nor degrees Celsius, strong headwind, it was amazing. We were inspired by the video, top 10 best ways to start the new year in cycling. So thanks, how that's cool is that? Yeah, that's super. Two people inspired by GCN now inspiring us with their quality photos. There that's you go. A big lake as well, 50 kilometers. Massive lake. That, yeah, good point actually, I'd not even thought about that. Yeah. Nice one though, yeah, super nice to hear. First place winner of a GCN Core long sleeve fluoro jersey and a GCN Core fan bib ties is... Oops. So what was that? That's the little, little drum roll. Oh yeah, little cool. Drum roll, my drum roll. Uh, is Fabrizia Postiglione. And with this photo of the Amalfi Coast in a beautiful location for a winter century ride with lots of elevation gain, the coastal road winds its way up and down among secluded coves and picturesque villages. A bucket list experience, look at that. That does look absolutely flipping amazing, particularly with that Bianchi in front as well. Could it be a more Italian photo? I don't think it could. Not making me jealous in the slightest. No. <laughs> oh, that feels a long way away Completely right with now. a nice cappuccino, just getting the sun rays on, right, beautiful. Is it like, there's actual colours there. We haven't mm. seen colours here in the UK yeah. for at least a couple of months. Everything's just like, it's like 50 shades of grey, but not in a good way, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, yeah. No, is that just me? Anyway, uh, right, right they, uh, I've totally lost yeah. my train of thought <laughs> now. No, I'm not going down that route. I'm going to bring it back to the GCN show. Um, there we go. Congratulations to you three winners. Your prizes will be on their way to you. If you want to get involved for next week, simply upload your photos to the GCN app. We'll pick out our favourites. And of course, you can get voting and check out other people's photos whilst you're there. And now it's time for Cycling Shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and we'll begin with the news that a petition is gaining ground over in America and Canada calling for the end of built-to-fail bikes. That's bikes that usually fail within 100 hours of use and come complete with plastic parts and components that can't be taken apart or replaced. The petition was started by a Colorado bike group and calls on manufacturers to stop producing and selling bikes that fall apart after a few months' use. Usually, these take the form of $200 bikes found in big box stores and the group calls the practice predatory and likens such bikes to single-use plastics. Yeah, what we need instead are more places like these. This is the Bike Kitchen San Francisco and they recently had a sale of their donated frames, bikes and components which had built up when the store was closed during the height of COVID. And they had to start the sale simply because there were so many, or rather they were so overstocked they'd run out of space to keep them all. And these are bikes that would usually retail for like eight or nine hundred dollars and they were selling one for sixty to eighty dollars how cool is that wow i mean we'd be like kids in a sweet shop there absolutely we? we would oh, yeah blimey second hand bikes are great as far as we're concerned a lot of people though lament the price of bikes particularly e-cargo bikes saying that they are more expensive than the price of a car but that is comparing it to a second third or even a fourth generation fourth hand car so maybe more of us should be buying used bikes too well, yeah, that does seem like a good idea. And hopefully, as more of us turn to e-bikes and cargo bikes to get around town, then there should be more second-hand bikes on offer, I guess, because it's still such like a new trend, isn't it, that there's just not that many of them around at the minute. 
or perhaps I, you don't need to buy an e-bike in the first place. What about this? Local to us in the city of Bristol, big issue e-bikes are providing rental e-bikes around the city, helping people get out and about without the use of a car and onto bikes. The difference from typical bike share schemes being that this will employ vulnerable and homeless people in local communities, helping to provide access to support and services which will help them improve their lives along the way. Yeah, that's a big issue to those of you in the UK will be familiar. It is the big issue, the big issue magazine sales, and they're moving to, uh, to bike share, which is awesome. I genuinely hope it's a real success, and I'm very pleased that they've painted their bikes white as opposed to the horrific yellow ones that used to litter Bristol. Anyway, meanwhile, the debate is raging on, as usual, about bike helmets. This time, though, it's been stoked by an announcement that a bike, taxi, and e-cargo service provider around London are banning their riders from using a helmet. Oh yes, so they say that riders take much fewer risks when not using one, and any accidents that do happen tend to take place off the bike. So this is a safety decision on their part, apparently. Yes, Pedal Me said the reporting near-miss incidents, properly training riders and maintaining its fleet of cargo bikes, as well as tracking poor rider behavior, is more effective than helmets in keeping riders safe. And that they feel those who believe they're taking sufficient risks on a bike that they need to wear a helmet are not welcome to work for the company. Interesting stance to take, isn't it, Si? Let us know what you think in the comments. I'm not sure what I think about that. I think in principle, yeah, it's right, but I can't see that you can ban someone from wearing a helmet. But uh, anyway, it's going to define opinion, so get involved. Um, moving on, though, from riding outside to inside now, and it's rumoured that the global indoor training brand Peloton are potentially set to be taken over by Amazon, according to the Wall Street Journal, or Nike, according to the Financial Times. Peloton, either way, have had a tough time of it recently with lockdown ending, causing a decline in users, plus quite a lot of negative press some things, uh, and cheaper versions of their training bike flooding onto the market. Maybe everyone is heading back out into the wilds again. Pro cyclists definitely are if they're racing in Spain this month. There have been a series of new gravel sectors introduced to races over the last weeks. Notably in the Tour of Valencia and also in the recent Saudi Tour, there is even a new race on the calendar to rival Strada Bianchi. Well, imagine that. The Classica Juan Paraiso interior will be held in the Andalusia region of Spain this month and will include over 40 kilometers of gravel sectors. Remco Evenepoel is going to be delighted. After he said that the summit finish in the Volta Valencia was too much like mountain biking. <laughs> yes, oh yes. He hasn't had a good, good run of it, has he, Si, on the rough stuff? Maybe uh, he could you know, benefit with some lessons from Blake or Rich over at GMBN. He can give him, give him a word, word of wonder. I've definitely benefited from that. I'm not sure Remco Evenepoel looks quite as bad off-road as, as you did before your lesson. After it, though, you can definitely give him a run for his money, for sure. Uh, now, the infamous sports director and architect of Lance Armstrong's success, Johan Bruniel, isn't happy about it either. So it's not just Evan Paul. Uh, he tweeted that road cycling is not a circus. And to all pro cyclists, you are not circus animals, so don't allow anyone to treat you like one. Slightly ironic, given his track record. Goodness. Uh, better move on swiftly. I think we had. That's enough from Johan. Right, it's time for hack forward slash bodge. Oh, I see what you did there. You did a good, a right one and then a wrong one. Yeah, I that's like what it. I'm meant to do. I... Yeah, of course you did, mate. Uh, right then, this we're going to start things off with Rosaka two nine zero eight with a headset setting tool hack. So you basically put that on your steer, you whack it in with that. Yeah, basically. so presumably you've got the right diameter so that sits neatly on the crown race and then you boff it on and because it's over your steerer, that acts as like a, a bit of a jig to hold it in place. So it'll go on straight. Inspired. Love it. Sounds like a hack to me. I think that's a hack. 100%. Um, well, I say 100%. 73% of you lot voted it was a hack. 27% of you perhaps were like Connor and didn't quite understand what it was for. Yeah. Hopefully. Because that was great, I think. Moving on though, um, this one has been sent in by Timmy Alrig39. No levers, no problem. I think that's Tim Young. <laughs> this is Tim Young. <laughs> Sorry, Tim Young. Right, you did send in a cracking uh, cracker one here though. No levers, no problem. Got a flat on my gravel commute and realised I had no tyre levers with me. After mild panic on how I was going to complete the next five miles, I improvised um, with. My work security card? Mm. 
That's amazing. That must be a very like heavy duty work security card. You obviously have a very secure job, I guess, or at least a job in some high security stuff, what I mean. Um, and also, can we just salute you for a gravel commute? That's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, solid I like one. That. Yeah, solid one got the job done, didn't it? That's a hack. Absolutely, a hack from me. 76% um, of you lot said hack as well. Um, remember though, Tim, you don't always need your tire levers anyway. You should be able to get them off with your thumbs. Yeah, so, uh, but you know, if you've got a work security card there hanging around, mm. that's fine. He might fine. not have wanted to ru ruin his thumbprint because if he's really that high up in security, you need thumbprints sometimes for access. Yeah, although I reckon it'll probably have like retina. It'll be like oh, a yeah. retina scam, won't it? Like something off Mission Impossible. Um, let us know, Tim, whether or not you are in fact a secret agent. We're intrigued. Yes. Uh, right then, next up, we got this one from Dave. Oh, hang on a minute, having just teased you. What's Here we that? go. Dave EA Slick. Obvious. Yep. Uh, simple, cheap, waterproof emergency contact card. Instead of spending money on a uh, road ID, I wrote my emergency contact info on the back of a business card uh, and had it laminated for a dollar at a stationery store. You know what? That's one of those things where you think, that's a good idea, that. Why on earth haven't I done that in the last 20 something odd years? Yeah, it's a great Being idea. Being a bike rider. The sort of thing you need to do, you don't need it until you do need it. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah, nice one, definitely a hack. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally a hack. I think that's awesome. Why haven't I done that before? I've got it on my iPhone. You know, you've got like the security information on the home screen. I didn't know that until about a year ago. I thought that was quite good. This is going to be a good excuse for me to buy a laminator. Not it... on your iPhone? No. No, okay, maybe get a laminator instead then. Um, or why not just 3D print it? Then it'd be doubly, doubly hack. A double hack. That's, that's above my skill set. Alex Payton's got one. Yeah, I'll, I'll do tell it for him you. to do it for me. Yeah. Next up. Conradis Con Conradski 861 PCF. 3D printed light mount. Yes, hey, hey. <laughs> I wanted to mount my Garmin lights under my computer, but the mount that comes with the light is so huge and vulgar. A so vulgar I, mount, yeah. yes, some of them are, aren't they? Yeah, you want vulgar. Some, you want nice light. Yeah. So I 3D printed a mount to fit my existing computer mount. My cousin uh, tapped a thread for the bolt, and hey presto, super stealth. A neat computer like mount. It's incredible what you can do with 3D printers these days. That, it, yeah, these days, as opposed to the old days where 3D printers were rubbish, you mean? Yeah, no, I, like, I know what you mean. And this, 97% hack, that I think is about the best thing that we've ever had, uh, at least in terms of votes. That, I just, that's left me utterly speechless. I think that's a thing of beauty. Yeah, Conrad, big. well done. I doff my pretend hat to you. Uh, Wabbit Hunter. Second life for shower caddy. This is intriguing. Uh, redecorating house, and the better half was about to put this practically new shower caddy in with the recycling when I thought of another use. Thrilled to have a spot to store my miscellaneous loose pieces of kit. I don't, I, I don't really oh, understand. Why is that? It's taken me a lot of time to process, but. This I'm, is, I'm there. I'm there. This is what I think. See, I thought he'd taken the bike stuff into the shower. He's taken the shower to the bike stuff. Yeah. The shower's become his closet. I think I couldn't get past the spinergy. That's why I was confusing me. I was like, why did the spinergy need to be in the shower? Uh, yeah, I thought that would be an amazing hack with an old spinergy wheel. But oh, um, little jacuzzi jets in the shower off a spinergy wheel. Yeah. That's what I th first thought. But no, I still I think that's a hack, isn't it? I mean, anything that gives uh, something that would otherwise be chucked out a second life. Yeah, amen to that. I think that's cool. Yeah. A hack from hack. me as well. 84% agree. Um, and let us know what you do with your spinnergy wheel as well. Is that rideable or is it just a work of art? Hopefully a bit of both. Yeah. Mm. Maybe use it to decapitate squirrels or things like that. That's what they were used for in the past, weren't they? Uh, right, I think that's the end of Hackle Bodge for this week, mate. That was a few crackers in there. Absolutely, 97%. Yeah. Uh, that's, I've never seen that before. That's yeah. uh, off the scale. It, well, not quite because it was 97, but yeah. nearly off the scale, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, if you want to get involved for next week, you know what to do by now, I'm sure. Upload your hacks and bodges to the GCN app and vote, of course, on the ones that are coming up next week as well. It's caption competition time now, that part of the show where you get a chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle. All you've got to do is put a witty caption to a photo we're about to give you in the comments section and we will pick a winner next week. We'll start as always with results. This was the photo we gave you of Toon van den Bosch uh, stacking it on the stairs at the Fayetteville Cyclocross World Champs. The winner, once again, Connor, it's Tim Bishop. So good, just Tim's caption of after this fall, he'll be in need of a tune-up. 
See what we did there? Uh, we, actually, we actually got in touch in the comments and said, Tim, if you win, have you got enough space on your mantelpiece for another prize? Uh, and he said, some people are hungry for success. I guess I'm just thirsty for captions. Put them. A man with ambition. There we go. I like it. So congratulations, Tim. Yeah, nice Another one, one winging its way to you. We've pretty much memorised your address by now. It'll just get winging its way in the post. What about this week's image, though, that's, Tim? Sorry, that sounds really sinister. I, I haven't memorised your address. I don't know where you live. No one has done. Mo moving on. Yep, swiftly. So this week's image. Um, Tim, you can have a go at this one. I hope size not standing outside your window whilst you uh, <laughs> watch this video. Uh, this is of Ilio Kaiser at the Saudi tour. <laughs> that's a great picture, isn't it? It's a brilliant picture. I I'm kind of genuinely wor wondering what he's up to. Um, <laughs> There are a few moments in those desert races where this is the case. The neutral zone is, is very, it's, it's, there's a lot of, my bum used to get a bit sore actually, just, it must be so slow. Really? Yeah, so slow. Just waiting for something to happen. Anyway, moving on. I'm going to go with this. Ilio Kaiser waiting for TV pictures to start. Ah, yeah. If you didn't know, uh, Saudi Tour has a few issues getting the, um, get the TV aeroplanes up in the air, didn't they? So uh, live pictures were slightly delayed. Um, so Leo Kaiser like couldn't watch the race. It feels like there's a lot to go on there, doesn't it? So we're expecting a very high standard of entries as well as the usual uh, rubbish ones from GCN presenters and the like. So, uh, so yeah, get stuck in in the comments section. Pick a winner next week. Right, time for comments of the week now and what we've got coming up on the channel. Uh, starting off with um, the video I did with James Golding in the Algarve region of Portugal. Um, just We met James, listened to his story, which was just so, so inspirational. Thanks once again, James, for your time. Um, yeah, really just mad story. The guy's been through so much and so inspiring to see um, that he's still in such a positive place. Um, some really amazing comments too came in on that video, really humbling to read those, so thank you for sending them in. Um, I've picked out a few just to, to share with you all. This is for a man, not my real name. Cycling has been a huge part of my recovery from cancer, both mentally and physically. Hats off to this guy and to everyone else on these comments for their individual stories. Amazing what sport can do, and even more amazing what humans can do in the face of such circumstances. I uh, really couldn't agree more. Um, this one's been sent in by Mark Skinner. Nod Hodgkin's lymphoma survivor here. That's one of the really nasty ones. Had a bone marrow transplant in 2003. Would have been dead many years ago without it. One of my biggest problems was getting motivated to ride again. That took at least five years after three years of treatment. Now, how do I fund doing the RAM? Um, well, good luck if you do decide to do the RAM. You don't have yeah. to do the RAM, but just getting out on your bike, I think, is, um, is, is just an achievement in itself, Mark. So good luck. Um, with everything. Uh, and this last one from Pete Franks, what a legend, a true inspiration, amazing story, chapeau and right on man, which I think sums, sums it all up. So thanks once again everyone, send in your comments. Um, Absolutely, yeah. And if you haven't seen that video yet, then definitely, definitely check it out. So it came out on Saturday on GCN, so, uh, so make sure you double back and see that one. Um, now, under how to smash your goals in 2022, Sildara Cycling said, my resolution was a pretty easy one. Just do a single 100K ride once a month, every month of the year, with a possibility of a 100 miler in the summer, but we'll see about that one. I like that, actually. Yeah, I like that. I'd like to try that. It's a good, good kind of way to be, I think, if you can get that 100K in every month. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because I do a lot of riding, but it's all kind of short and fast, and actually, 100K ride, once a month, you can squeeze that in, can't you? Yeah, there's nothing. I love a, I love a good long ride. I, yeah. I haven't done one in a while. I'm going to get out there now and do it. Get my month in. Make <laughs> nice. up, I have to make up for it. It's one January. <laughs> Moving on to Hank rides all the roads on Zwift. If you missed this one, it's Hank being Hank once more and riding every single road on Zwift at once in one hit. There's a lot of roads. There's a lot of worlds on Zwift. Stuff you forget exists on Zwift, or I do anyway. Yeah, I think even he actually underestimated this challenge. Bologna, um, Italy. Who remembers that one? I um, remember that one. I had to do that one before the Giro actually started. Did so you? I did an extra stage. I've never done that one. I, I tend to, I, well anyway, it was, we're digressing. We're Connor. digressing, What yeah. did people say about Hank? Well, the Dionysius Kasuma said Hank is probably the most insane cyclist at GCN. I do tend to agree. Yeah. He rides harder at GCN compared to when he was a still a pro cyclist. <laughs> 
<laughs> so he's got more, more motivation here than when he was racing. Probably, yeah. He does a lot less training now, so I think he probably does have to try a lot harder yeah. to do these. <laughs> he did look a little bit wrecked after that one. Yeah, I think he's still wrecked, actually. Is he? <laughs> yeah, I, talk, I spoke to him on the phone a few days ago. He sounded a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. John Kinder also said, Hank's dad, right, I'm back. Then you know you're in for a good video. Great stuff. Hank's dad, he's just, he's just a legend. Genuinely is a legend. Uh, yeah, and uh, Fabian is Isara said, I love how Hank is calling his own father Hank's dad. Um, yeah, I noticed that as well. It's, um, I think everyone's calling him Hank's dad, even in the local village up where <laughs> they live. <laughs> There's Hank's dad. <laughs> they actually are. <laughs> oh, on, to, on to how to get fit on minimal training, though. Doug Arthur, a dedicated athlete, always sleeps in their sports kit and isn't afraid to increase lung capacity with a good snoring session. You are right, man. I'll get you sleeping. Yeah. I don't think you should sleep in cycling shorts. No. I don't think that's good for you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that one. It's not the most comfortable. No, and it's also one of the worst things I found about sleeping in a hedge is like just going to sleep in your chamois. Yeah, it's I rank, know. I absolutely rank. rank. Yeah, I'll that's, spare you the details. That's why I jump in the sea if I can, just to have a bit of a wash. But I did that, and then the fish all started nibbling on my feet. I was oh, dirty. Nibbling on your what? <laughs> my feet. Your feet, okay, good. <laughs> oh, I thought we were, I thought we were, yeah. We segueing from chamois, <laughs> but we went to feet, so that's all right. It was, it was my feet. <laughs> okay, moving swiftly on to what is coming up on the channel this week. On Wednesday, top 10 life hacks for cyclists. I don't know what's in this film, actually, film, video, but I'm going to watch it. Are you involved in this one? I am involved in this one. We filmed this, I, I believe this. we filmed this at the top of Monchique in the Argyle region in the midst of a rather strong wind windstorm. Uh, it got rather cold. <laughs> There we go then. I can't around shaking my head. No, it's not up up the massive mountain. It's somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I don't know where it is, but it's in Portugal, and it was a lot of fun to film. I hope you enjoy the video. Cool. Right on Thursday, we got yoga for cyclists, specifically working on your legs. So that'll be a good one to watch. And then on Friday, how do pro cyclists choose their shoes? Which is quite an interesting topic, really, when you think about it. How do pro cyclists choose their shoes? So yeah, make sure you tune in on Friday for that one. Then on Saturday, we have cyclist versus horse. I'm interested to see what shape this kind of takes. I don't know anything about it. This is Hank's uh, little pet project. Indeed it is. With his horse. I don't actually know if it's his horse, actually. I think no, that's... it's um, Heather from GTN. It's her horse. So, yeah. There you go. Is Hank riding it? No. He's riding the bike. He's riding the bike. So yes. yeah, which is faster, cyclist or horse rider? So there we go. Yeah, on Sunday we have Was Cycling Harder back in the day. Yeah, so mm. Ollie and Alan Marangoni from GCN Italia are filming in Italy as we speak, in fact. Uh, vintage bikes and the route of a semi-classic Milano Torino. So uh, that should be pretty cool, shouldn't it? Um, and then over on GCN Plus, we have an awesome documentary for you, Orbea, the inside story. So Ollie went over to the Basque Country to really get under the skin of Orbea and find out all about the brand, the history of it. There's an interview with Iban Mayo in there as well. One of my so, heroes. Was he? Yeah, I used to pretend to be him. I used to unzip my jersey on the climbs and pretend I was Iban Mayo. I can see a lot of similarities Connor between you and Iban Mayo. Is it the tan? It was the mullet that you got cut last week. Yeah. So uh, he had a good mullet, didn't he? He did have a good one. Yeah, you can't, I, I love a good mullet. Yeah. Um, and then it's incredibly busy over on the racing side of GCM Plus as well, isn't it? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Tour de la Provence, Tour of Oman, Super Prestige Cyclocross in Havre, which is one of the best courses of the year. It's normally like back in November but it's on in February this week. Uh, Vuelta and Mercia, um, the X2O trophy in Brussels, back to cyclocross, and then the Classica Almeria as well. How on earth will you find the time? That's an endurance challenge in itself. It's all kicking off, racing is back. It is indeed. Oh, I love it, I love it. Uh, right, well, that is it for the GCN show for this week. Connor, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Si. Thanks, well, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. Um, we will leave you with um, another clip of Dan uh, and his dog. See you next week.